Well, hello everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in to Midweek. I am Justin Patterson alongside Mr. Dennis Cottrell, and we are very excited to be with you here this evening because we're going to tackle a topic that I think uh, pretty much every Christian falls into this mm -hmm. category. Mm -hmm. Now, what we've talked about over the last couple weeks, and I encourage you, if you have missed any of our videos, to go back and watch them. We One of the things we talked about was uh, salvation. Salvation everybody falls into one of two categories, either you're saved or you're unsaved. And so we talked about what that process looks like. But tonight with sanctification, that only applies to Christians. Mm -hmm. So if you could explain to us just in, in broad terms what sanctification is. Okay. At the moment that a person has been justified or been born again, when they have experienced a new birth, mm -hmm. their, their sanctification takes place first. Okay. As a, after, the, after the justification. And then that begins the process of an ongoing sanctification. Okay. And that word sanctify means to set apart. Mm -hmm. it, it's that God sets apart believers for a holy life. Okay. And so that sanctification is that process that's taking place whereby the Lord cleanses us, purifies us, and sets us apart for his use. Mm -hmm. And so it is a it it begins at at salvation, it continues all through our life, and so it's a wonderful concept where the Lord continues to help us, encourage us, strengthen us, grow us up, if you would, mm -hmm. uh, to become more like Him. So it's a wonderful process, but right. it also is one of those things that for believers, many times we don't understand what God's doing in our lives, mm -hmm. but He's working. Yeah. Yeah. And I am um, one of those people that when I uh, came to the point of salvation, no one taught me about sanctification. It was one of those things that I started to see more and more apparent in my own life, but I didn't know what was going on. Mm -hmm. Looking back, I could see clear as day that that was the Holy Spirit beginning that process in me, which he continues to this day. And he will continue until I take my last breath. Yes. And it's it's one of those things that there are certain things as as ministers that that are near and dear to our hearts. Yep. And for me, sanctification is one of those things that I try to incorporate it into pretty much every um, teaching that I do mm -hmm. because I didn't know about it. And I want to make sure that no one else doesn't know yeah. anything about it. I think I said that right. Uh, I want everyone to know about sanctification because if it is taking place that... Um, I didn't have anyone to explain it to me, so I want to explain it to, to somebody. You know, one of, the, one of the first things that happens to us at the moment of our salvation in our personal life is it's unexplained, but all of a sudden, almost instantly, we have a new attraction and a desire to study the Word of God. Mm -hmm. Now, the reason we do that is because it's it's something that's internal that God places in our, in our life. Mm -hmm. But... It's because it's also scriptural because the Word of God is a part of that process and sanctifying us. Mm -hmm. Let me read John 17, 17, where the Lord Jesus says, Sanctify them in your truth. Your word is truth. Mm -hmm. So as the process of sanctification begins and continues with our um, willingness and desire to study the Word of God. So I've known people over the years that thought this was the most boring book in the world. Mm -hmm. And and then when they become Christians, all of a sudden they have that desire inside mm -hmm. to pick it up and read it. Right. And that is that process. And as we grow spiritually, that process never stops. Mm -hmm. He wants us to, he wants us to get to get involved in, in our study of the Word of God. Mm -hmm. And that is a purifying process yeah. for each of us. So what we're going to do is we're going to continue through. We're going to show a couple of scriptures to, that kind of helps illustrate what it is that we're talking about. But what we're going to do is we're going to do, give you four points, four things to walk away with about the process of sanctification to help you kind of understand and to kind of illustrate what it is that we're talking about. I heard it said this way uh, a long time ago, and I love this. As Christians, it's our job to catch the fish. It's God's job to clean them. Mm, good. So it, something that simple helps kind of really uh, 
give us a, a word picture of, of what sanctification looks like. Our job is to bring people into the kingdom. Now, ultimately, that is God who is doing the saving, not us. We're simply the messengers. We mm -hmm. present the gospel and people respond to it in a supernatural way with the working of the Holy Spirit. So our job is to catch those fish, metaphorically. It's God's job to clean them in that, that cleansing process, sanctification. And, and I'm glad that you brought up that there are two things that happen, that there is a sanctification that begins at justification. That does not mean that we are made, that we will n never sin ever again in that process of sanctification, but we are sanctified at justification or at salvation. But the sanctifying process is that lifelong process. So I'm glad that you pointed out, if you've ever wondered, there are two basically verbs of sanctification and that is we are sanctified but then we are it is a sanctification process yes that goes on so i want to point out in second peter chapter three second peter chapter three verse 14 says therefore beloved since you look for these things be diligent to be found spotless and blameless by him at peace and then I'm going to jump down um, into verse 18. This is Peter giving this instruction. It says, but grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The reason I want to talk about that scripture in the process of sanctification is that is what we should be doing. Our part is to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But there is a supernatural, a spiritual element to this mm -hmm. that the Holy Spirit is doing his ministry, what he is designed to do to convict us where we need to be convicted, to lead us where we need to be led, and to teach us where we need to be taught. So we see our part and we see the part of the Holy Spirit. Yes, and it's kind of interesting. Uh, sometimes people, you'll hear of people who stay away from church for whatever reason, and they assume that you can grow without ever being in, in uh, with God's people. Right. But the truth is, that's part of the sanctifying process. Mm -hmm. When you come to church, you need to be exposed to the Word of God. Right. But it, that is a process that begins, but it involves God's people. Mm -hmm. God will bring people into your life who will help you understand, who have the gift of teaching, who will encourage you, who will minister to you. And as you grow in the Lord, you're going to find out that God has given you gifts to minister to other people. Mm -hmm. And that also is a part of that sanctifying process. Yeah. And so it's, it's very difficult to do that off by yourself. Mm -hmm. It is something that God uses to minister to each other. Mm -hmm. And it's a, it's a great part of the process. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to do is there, there is a lot more uh, scripturally that we can talk about, and, and we're going to look at, at what 1 John says. But what we want to do is we want to give you four applicable points, uh, four uh, things to think about when it comes to sanctification, this lifelong process. Um, and before we do that, I, I want to add this little, little piece to it. I heard that when we are truly born again and when we receive the Holy Spirit, at that point of salvation, that God does not take away our ability to sin. He takes away our ability to enjoy it. Mm. And so when I heard that, I'm like, oh, okay, that's what it is. And, and we're yeah. going to talk about the battle between the mind and, and um, the flesh here in just a little bit. But the first point that I want to make is sanctification is the will of God. And we see that in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, where Paul says, this is the will of God, your sanctification. Now, he's talking in a broader context about the sexual immorality in um, the church at Thessalonica. But it is the will of God that we should be sanctified, that we cannot profess faith in Christ without some portion of sanctification happening, yes. regardless of when we go to be with the Lord. Yes. So whether you're on this earth for 50 years after you have been saved or for five seconds, yes. there is going to be that process of sanctification. It, and it may be short, but the will of God is for us to not remain where we're at. And I've, I've heard this in a lot of a lot of modern churches that um, 
come as you are. God loves you just as you are. There is some truth to that, that yes, come as you are, but God does not want us to stay in our own sinfulness. He doesn't want us to stay exactly how we are. His will is for us to be cleansed and to be purified by the Holy Spirit. Just as a parent's desire is to see that growth take place in his or her child, mm -hmm. there is that natural uh, desire in God's life for us to see us grow in grace and knowledge of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And as that, as we grow in our sanctification, that is going to be, make it more fruitful. We're mm -hmm. going to become uh, different in, in, in so many ways. It may be, uh, may, may be anger issues. It could be sexual immorality. It mm -hmm. could be controlling our tongue. It could be uh, desires to please the Lord is there. And as we grow in the, in the Word, Mm -hmm. We'll find ourselves changing. We'll look back after 10 years and we'll come to, sometimes we'll say, oh, I can't yep. believe I was doing that. Mm -hmm. And so it's a natural process. And he does it because of his, uh, because of his love. Mm -hmm. He's not trying to make us miserable. He's trying to save us from ourselves complicating our lives. Yep. So many times I have looked back and I thought, oh, my goodness, I can't believe I did that. And that's where my pain comes from, yep. from the dumb things that I've done in the past. Mm -hmm. Well, he and his love... Uh, he wants us to experience so much more than that. Mm -hmm. And so as we grow, and as we grow in our sanctification, we become more like Him. Yep. The truth is all of us, uh, is you know, we, we see our failures, but the truth is He sees our changes. He sees mm -hmm. our potential. Right. We, we are growing in Him, and mm -hmm. uh, it's, it really adds a quality of life to, to our life. Yeah, absolutely. So we know that sanctification is the will of God. Uh, that's point number one. Point number two is, it, and this, this, I cannot stress this enough, and you kind of hinted at this. Our second point is sanctification, it looks different for every person. Now, when we think about the process of sanctification, I was 28 years old before I came to the Lord. Mm -hmm. Uh, for how, how old were you? I was you about were, seven. Seven. Oh, okay. Childhood experience. Yes. So very, very different. If I compare my process of sanctification with his, I'm going to get disillusioned because he was in that process way before I was at a, at a maturity level. So for me, it was later in life that I began to see that. And I'm a little slow sometimes on certain things as we all are, but if I compare my sanctification process with anyone else, I'm either going to do one of two things. I'm going to say, well, you struggled with that. I didn't, so I am therefore better than you. Mm -hmm. Or the alternative is I'm struggling with this still, but Dennis is not, so Dennis is now higher than I am over here. And that's, that's kind of, a, unfortunately, a natural tendency in, in our humanity that we compare ourselves. But the sanctification process looks different for each and every one of us. So we need to take a look at that and not become, like what you said earlier, judgmental about well, you've, you've been a Christian for 10 years. How are you still struggling with that? The Lord is working in that person. So it's not our job or shouldn't be our job to point out those kinds of things. Our job should be there to help them um, if they are, in fact, struggling. Yeah, come, along, come alongside. Uh, so many times uh, we find our, our own personal struggles, and God sometimes brings those people in our life that come alongside us, mm -hmm. and they give us insight, maybe friendship, maybe acceptance, or mm -hmm. sometimes even discipline. But the point mm -hmm. is, God uses other people to encourage us, but it's not our role to be judging them and condemning them. Right. Because, again, each of us individually Mm -hmm. have different issues. Yep. I might have an issue of, uh, I, I like chocolate cake, you know, mm -hmm. and I have it, I might eat too much of that. Well, it's not my role to condemn somebody else who's going through a struggle uh, with, with, you know, with this sort of food issue right. or smoking or something else. The truth is we're different. God takes us where we're at. Mm -hmm. And he brings us to where he wants to, he takes us where we're at and he brings us to where he wants us to be. Mm -hmm. And so to do that, to look at it and understand that God's doing this separately, it reinforces 
we're being customized. It's, mm -hmm. a, it's a customized transformation. Yeah. He's working in my life in certain areas, and he's working in our, your life in certain areas. And sometimes we can and do encourage each other and come mm -hmm. alongside each other. But the truth is, all of us are being sanctified in some area. Yep. And if somebody doesn't feel that that desire, not to, not only to know the word, but that desire to be changed, then something's wrong. Mm -hmm. Because that's a part of spiritual growth. Yep. So our, our third point that we want to talk about here tonight is just to reiterate kind of the obvious, but it's, it's a good reminder for us that sanctification is a process in the life of every single Christian. And we were talking before and, and oftentimes that I know you've seen it, I've seen it, that when someone does profess faith in Christ, that they are in what we call the honeymoon stage, that they are on fire for the Lord. And then what happens is point number two, when they start comparing their process of sanctification to someone else, mm -hmm. meaning if they are struggling with you know, something in, in their life that is not immediately taken away, they become disenchanted mm -hmm. and they in turn, and, and I, I think this is kind of a natural thing to do, it's not the right thing, but I, I can see the process, that they begin to question their salvation. Yes. Because Christians aren't supposed to drink, yet I'm still waking up desiring alcohol every morning. Mm -hmm. If they say that, then they could easily, it's almost like the wind gets taken out of their sails, yeah. and they're like, well, I was on fire, but now I'm not. I'm still dealing with the same dirt. Yeah. that I was before, mm -hmm. and they begin to question their salvation. That, And that's the point that I always want to stress with every new believer is that sanctification is a process. Allow the Holy Spirit to work at His pace, but we can't be resistant to change. Uh, this is how I've always done it. We've got to allow the Holy Spirit to move and, and work. Yeah, and sometimes uh, we become disillusioned, and we begin to say something to this effect like, if I was a Christian, how could I do that? Yeah. Well, the truth is, Christians can do the same things that those who are not Christians can do. Mm -hmm. the, the, the difference is God wants to move us out of that bondage, mm -hmm. and He has saved us for the purpose of that change that He's, that he's bringing about in our lives. Mm -hmm. um, so, it, it, again, it, He's purifying us in that process, but at the same time, that disillusionment, understand that that oftentimes we find ourselves being tripped up at what somebody else does mm -hmm. or something not so much about what Christ but about other people and so sometimes in the church people get tripped up over things mm -hmm. small things yeah. like the color of the carpet mm -hmm. or or some decision that was made in the business meeting mm -hmm. and we find ourselves stumbling and becoming disenchanted with Christianity and we pull out of the church uh, over a period of time and find ourselves drifting. I call it missing in action mm -hmm. where somebody gets so disillusioned about what somebody else does mm -hmm. that they have, have a falling away in a sense. Right. And God in the, in the meantime is trying to bring us back and, he, and to help us understand not to get tripped up. Mm -hmm. If I get tripped up about anything, they ought to be tripped up about Jesus because about, he is, he, in fact, he calls himself the stumbling block. Mm -hmm. and, and the truth is, once you understand, when you get that settled that he is the Savior and that you don't really have to get stumbled over him because right. he is the way, the truth, and the life. Mm -hmm. All these other things are inconsequential. Mm -hmm. They just does, it's not a big deal. Yeah. It's only when we make it a big deal. Mm -hmm. And so as Christians, we want to be sure yeah. and, and be involved in the sanctification process. Yeah. I'm reading from uh, 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 First John, and the yeah. whole book of First John uh, deals with this issue of sanctification. Mm -hmm. And I'm reading from the third chapter, verse 3, and it says, Everyone who has this hope, that hope is, is Jesus Christ, it, everyone who has this hope fixed on him, purifies himself just as he is pure. So mm -hmm. that's that desire within within every believer to purify and cleanse yourself. Mm -hmm. Things that you did in the past you don't want to do anymore. He changes your want to's. Mm -hmm. And there are some of those, it's sometimes those take place quickly mm -hmm. and sometimes it takes place over a period of time. Yep. 
And so there was a time that uh, a man, in fact, he was a good friend of mine, he invited me to church. Well, I was so out of fellowship at that point, I didn't want to go to church. So mm -hmm. I said, I don't want to go to church. He said, I want you to come to church just one time. Mm -hmm. And I said, I'll come one time, but don't bug me about it anymore. Mm -hmm. And he said, all right. And so I went to church. Well, that's all I needed. Mm -hmm. And then I started feeding again on the word. And that, that life that was in there be, began to spring up again. Yeah. And that sanctification continued. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the questions that, that I want to, uh, I want to, to for us to, to wrestle with before we leave, um, the issue comes up sometimes. Um, is it possible, do, is it possible for us in this life to ever stop sinning so completely so that sanctification, that process is complete? Because there are some people who believe that mm -hmm. they can be perfectly sanctified. On this earth. earth. Yes. Yeah. Let me read this because this kind of helps. No one who is born of God practices sin because he can, because his seed, the seed of Christ abides in him and he cannot sin because he's born of God. And the issue is there is one of practicing sin. Mm -hmm. It's not that you can't sin individually because right. we know that happens all the time. Mm -hmm. But the born again believer does not make a habitual practice of the lifestyle right. of sinning. Mm -hmm. it, the, you're different in sight. And yet we know that we stumble and we make bad decisions and sometimes we do d dumb things. Mm -hmm. But the truth is, when you're born again, that sanctification takes us uh, through and where we stop practicing as a lifestyle mm -hmm. to sin. And that's what it means you cannot sin. Right. So what we were talked about earlier is, again, your thoughts about can someone reach that point of just never sinning no nope. okay no nope. and, and that is the the battleground becomes the mind because you have essentially to oversimplify you have the flesh and then you have the mind or the heart mm -hmm. the heart wants to please god with everything that we do with our actions with our thoughts with you know our words everything that is the desire inside of us the problem is our flesh yeah. that is what wants to sin that is what wants that cigarette first thing in the morning or that drink when you get home from work and the flesh, the chocolate cake, all of that kind of stuff. The, the things that all of us, all meaning all Christians, struggle with the flesh each in our own way. Yes. So the battle becomes the heart versus the flesh. And so uh, when we talk about do we sin, well, our heart doesn't because we abide in Christ and he in us the process becomes that flesh how do we stop with the flesh what we do is we feed our heart we feed our mind we do what Romans 12 2 talks about that is renew our things to the Word of God we yes. feast on what it is that he wants so that we're not feeding the flesh yes absolutely and that's and that's the point where it involves uh, an ongoing diet of the Word of God. Yep. They sanctify through the Word, which is truth. Mm -hmm. And um, for each of us, oh, that, that will be a little different experience. Uh, but as the Lord will customize us. I like to think about customizing transformation. Mm -hmm. uh, we're not all the same. We're not, uh, I don't have a struggle with alcohol. But other people's bodies are different, and they may have struggled mm -hmm. with alcohol. And so the point is, I have my issues, and you have your issues. What he's doing is the Holy Spirit is working with us individually mm -hmm. to transform us and to change us and to purify us. Yep. And that's what he wants. And again, his motive is love. Mm -hmm. So he's doing that so that we, when it's all said and done, do not complicate our lives or minimize that complications mm -hmm. and pain that we, that we often experience as, even as believers. Yeah, yeah. Our, our natural tendency is to look and see what the other person's doing, but there's an old saying, mind your own biscuits and life will be gravy. So keep, keep <laughs> focused good. on your uh, process of sanctification. It's gonna look different for every single person, so don't get caught up in that. 
So we hope that this has been beneficial for each and every one of you who has watched this. Uh, we hope those four points, uh, it is the will of God, it looks different for every person, sanctification is a process, and the struggle itself is real and it is ongoing. So we hope that this, again, has helped you. And if you have any questions about the process of sanctification, you can find us on Sunday or you can leave us a comment in the comment section down below. Uh, until next week, we love each and every one of you. Invite someone to church with you this coming Sunday, and we will see you then.